Welcome to St. John's Virtual Church for the service of morning prayer right to wherever and whenever you are joining us. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us today. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Venite. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Please join me as we say together a portion of Psalm 145, alternating by whole verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Gospel of Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full, and those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? About seven years ago, a couple friends and I were hiking in nagorno karabakh this autonomous region in between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We were on day eight or so of a 14-day trek. 
And on this day in particular, the sun was beating down on us. It was in the middle of July. That morning, we had lost the trail a couple times, not sure of where it went from one marker to the next. By this point, we had hiked through mountains and forests, through small villages, over the countryside. But this day's hike brought us along the side of a road. And so all day, we were on the exposed shoulder of this road, the sun beating down on us, tensions running high. We were hungry and thirsty, frustrated with one another from having to spend every hour of the last week or so together. And the sun just kept beating on us. And this day, our goal was to get to the, this oriental plane tree related to the American sycamore that was supposedly the oldest and tallest tree of its kind in the world and was known as a sacred site to the people of this region. And so as we were making our way towards the sacred site in the spring that, that fed it, that would be our next source of water, we were exhausted, we were hungry, we were thirsty. And eventually we turned down the dirt road that led to our destination. And we had to jump out of the way a couple times as cars drove past us, folks driving onto the site. And we saw one SUV drive past us, and then it stopped. The driver backed up, and we realized that the car was full, presumably with one family. And the driver looked over at us and said, I am so sorry. Ordinarily, I would love to give you a ride, but as you can see, we just have no room. We laughed, said thank you, told them that it was all right, and continued on our way, continued the last mile till we got to the sycamore. And as we arrived, we saw this huge tree with its spreading branches before us. This thing is like 30 meters around. It's huge. It's mostly hollowed out from the inside with age. It's almost 2,000, it's more than 2,000 years old. But as we walked up to this tree, we saw around it all of these families and groups of people having picnics, sharing bread with one another, enjoying their time under the shade of this tree. And as we came up, we saw the same man from the car who had apologized to us, sitting there with his family. And we looked on the table, and they had taken this beautiful ripe red watermelon and chopped it up into slices and were sharing that with one another. And as we approached the sycamore, he waved to us. He called us over to their table and said, here, I couldn't give you a ride, but I have this for you. And into our hands, each placed for each of us one huge slice of that watermelon. And we dug in, hungry, thirsty, enjoying every minute of the sweetness from it, the juice from it. So it was like running down our faces we were so grateful for that gift. We were thirsty, we were hungry, and he fed us. And as I look back on that moment, I realized what he fed us with was more than just food. It was a sense of connection. He was able to see our need, to perceive our hunger, and knew that he had the means to meet it. And so out of his generosity, gave to us what we needed. We were able to eat, to drink, to rejoice in that sense of connection. Hunger is at the heart of both of our readings today. In Isaiah, we hear this wonderful passage, this passage of hope, where the God speaking through the prophet Isaiah says to the people that all who thirst will be sated, everyone will drink, that all those who have no money will still be able to buy and eat, without money, without price. And he asks this question, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Through Isaiah, God is speaking this invitation to all of the people to come and eat, to receive nourishment. He know, God knows that they are hungry. God knows that they are thirsty. They're hungry both in a literal sense, but also in a sense where they want to get back home. This passage is written while the people of Israel are in exile, while they are separated from their homeland, when they're hungry to return. And at the heart of this reading is this message that they will have what they are hungry for. 
They will return home. Similarly, in our gospel, we hear the disciples concerned about the hungry crowd, not knowing how they will eat as they're out in this deserted place surrounding Jesus. They know they are hungry and they have no idea how they will meet the needs of the crowd. But Jesus tells them that they have all they need. And with that, a few loaves of bread and a few fish become enough to feed more than 5,000. But before either of these, either the promise and the hope of return in Isaiah can happen, or the feeding of the crowd in Matthew, first there has to be that recognition of hunger. And I think for us it's the same. It's important to know and name our hunger, what it is that we desire. Especially now, as we are in this time where we are separated from those things, those places, those activities, those rhythms of life that are familiar and comforting. I think so many of us are hungry. I know I'm hungry. I'm hungry to look out in this church and to see all of you gathered. I'm hungry for Holy Communion, for the feast that God has laid at this table. I'm hungry for that. I want it so desperately. But along with that hunger, there's an awareness that it is not yet time. This week, a regathering plan went out to the community. If you haven't seen it, haven't read it, it should be in your email, or we'll be sending out physical copies. I say regathering plan, though we don't really know when we'll be able to gather back around this table. That's the reality of the time that we live in, that as we continue our fast from the Eucharist, as we continue to hunger for community, still the loving response is to stay, to stay away, to worship from our own homes, to find nourishment in other ways. And I know it's not what we would have chosen for ourselves, but it's still the reality we live in. And we're continuing to look at the situation, to think about what is safe, to think about how we can gather back in an inclusive way. Not so that the, the healthy few of us can gather this table, but so that all of us, in a day in the not too distant future, can once again gather at God's table that our hunger can be satisfied. In our world today, in our country, we have these two uh, parallel tracks going on, I feel like. One, we have this global pandemic that we're all living in the midst of. But we also have this growing awareness of racial inequities in our country. Through the protests that have been sparked by the killing of George Floyd, I think we all become aware the deep injustices, the deep divides between those who have and those who have not in our country. And as we think about our hunger for communion, our hunger for gathering, our hunger to return back to life as it was, I think there is also a growing awareness, at least I'm growing more and more aware of the hunger that our black and brown brothers and sisters that those who feel marginalized for whatever reason are feeling. It's this deep hunger for justice. I think one of the defining events of the last few weeks has been the death of John Lewis. And he's someone who so articulately and wonderfully named this hunger, this hunger for a more just world. He's devoted his entire life to it, from the civil rights marches of the 60s until his death just a few days, a few a couple weeks ago. I was struck by this quote from him that appeared in a New York Times op-ed. It was an essay that he wrote a couple days before he died to be published on the day of his funeral. He says this, when you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build what we call beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. That was the hunger that burned within John Lewis, that animated him, that charged his life's work, to seek that nourishment of an equitable and just society, this beloved community that is both the promise of democracy, of our country, but especially the promise of the gospel, 
That's what the feeding of the 5,000 in our gospel is. It's this vision of beloved community. It's this vision of all people being fed, all people having enough, and there being more to spare. It's also the message of our reading from Isaiah, where it's not just the people of Israel who will return to their homeland, but all the nations of the earth that will stream to them, that will come to their God. For the people of Israel living in exile, that experience of exile helped them to see their hunger clearly, helped them to see just how connected they were to this land, their homeland, this place that was the center of their worship, the place where their God resided, the place that their lives were inextricably bound up with. The exile experience of being a black man in America was, I think, what helped animate John Lewis's life and work. That experience of exile helped him see clearly the vast inequities in our country and to hunger for it to be better, to live up to its ideals. I think as a church, we are also in a place of exile, of not being able to gather here in this place that has been such a spiritual comfort and a home for us. And on one hand, I think it's important to see the ways that we can still be nourished in this time, whether that's through daily reflections or online worship, just all of these means that we have to still stay connected to one another. But that doesn't take away the very real hunger that we have, that I have, to be back at this table, to once again celebrate the Eucharist, to see all of you again in one place. And I think naming that hunger is really important. To hold together the gifts of this time, the the unexpected joys that we've found, but also the sorrow, the lament, the experience of loss. I think to hold both of those together, to be honest and open, vulnerable about, about what we are hungry for, as well as the gifts that we have, is an important step in how we move forward together, how we prepare that t- for that time when we can regather but also how we make, most of the, make the most of this meantime. The promise that ends both of our readings, reading from Isaiah and from Matthew's Gospel, is a vision of the kingdom of God where all are gathered together, sharing a meal. That is the enduring promise of all of Scripture, that the Old and the New Testaments, of the Gospels, that we will again taste, we will come together taste this meal, be a part of this beloved community, the kingdom of God. And while in times of exile, when we're separated, it can feel like we are far off from that. It's the hope that we are given through scripture. And as we go forward, being able to name our hunger and identify what it is that is our soul's deepest desire, God promises us that through that hunger, we will be nourished, that when we are thirsty, we will drink deeply. To name our hunger and to hear the hunger being expressed by those around us, by our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow children of God, by hearing those things, what it is that they hunger for, we open ourselves up to be nourished in new ways, ways that we could have never named or expected. And once and when we are fed in those ways, I hope that it will give us the strength, the courage, the sureness of God's enduring love and the abundance of that love, that we may then turn outward and share it with the world.
let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, and unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation, which you entrusted to our care. Move us to protect the earth and all its resources, that we may leave the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders in our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Help us to be instruments of peace, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and the whole human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Inspire us to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. Amen. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect it and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, 
that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. pray together the prayer for the power of the Spirit. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.